Langford, you are recognized for your questions. Thank you. Just the fill-in guide today on this one as well. Uh, <laughs> Ranking Member Portman, thank you uh, for your leadership in the committee as well. Mr. Chairman, thank you uh, for the hearing. And again, thank you to all the witnesses uh, today for the process. I do want to follow up what uh, Ranking Member Portman uh, was talking about on the Equal Rights Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Shogun, during your uh, process uh, in your consideration as a nominee, uh, did anyone from the Biden administration ask you about your stand on the ERA, what your position was on that in the mm -hmm. approval process? And if so, what was that conversation? Thank you, Senator, for that question. I was not asked that question during the process. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your very clear statements, uh, both to our staff and in writing and to Senator Portman. Uh, that the issue with the ERA is settled by the federal courts uh, mm -hmm. or by Congress, mm -hmm. not by the archivist or the archivist, as you say <laughs> on it, uh, either way. Uh, so I w I w we want to make that very clear because obviously there are members mm -hmm. of Congress that have disagreement on that. The previous archivist disagreed and said, no, this is not the role of the archivist mm -hmm. to unilaterally make that decision. You've obviously agreed with that publicly, uh, and I appreciate your engagement on that. You and I have spoken before about a warning label that is mm -hmm. currently on our founding documents mm -hmm. uh, that is actually on every document mm -hmm. uh, that is digitized in the National Archives uh, in the consideration. It warns uh, Americans or anyone reading our documents that there's potentially harmful con content, that this content could be offensive mm -hmm. uh, to individuals, that whether it's the United States Constitution or whether it's autopsy photos from World War II, it doesn't matter, it's on everything, uh, as that warning piece on that banner on it. Uh, my question to you in our conversation was, I, I don't want to be misunderstood in any way uh, that the National Archives could consider the United States Constitutional, uh, Constitution a potentially offensive document, uh, which clearly it's a founding document, it's not offensive. Uh, there are bits of our history uh, that all of us as Americans look back on uh, and are embarrassed who we were as Americans and decisions that we have made. We don't always get it right over our history, but we are working to make a more perfect union. But mm -hmm. all of our history is our history. Mm -hmm. The important thing to me is there's never a warning on a single document uh, and that we, we, we reconsider labeling some of our documents offensive uh, when they're just our history on this. So as you and I have spoken about this before, mm -hmm. my challenge is to be able to review that warning, mm -hmm. to be able to determine what's the best way to be able to do it. Uh, what's appropriate to be able to get to parents uh, to say if your mm -hmm. children are looking at all these things, there are there are photos that are gruesome photos from World War II, mm -hmm. for instance, of the battlefield in the Civil War uh, that are painful to be able to view, especially mm -hmm. as a child. But there's also important national documents that are here. How do you plan to be able to handle this offensive label and this warning? Mm -hmm. yes, Senator, thank you uh, for that question. You are correct. When there is a search done, in the archives, the online archives catalog, uh, there is language um, that makes users aware that they may inadvertently uh, come across content that could be difficult uh, to view. As we talked about yesterday in your office, I am primarily concerned about, if I am confirmed as archivist, I want more uh, teachers and students to use the National Archives. If you have to do a history project on uh, World War II or World War I, we want you to come to the National Archives and use that catalog to find those primary sources. And as you know, kids are excellent searchers today. Uh, they're better searchers than we are. So when they look for those relevant documents, they could easily jump to something else inadvertently. And so that's why that language is there. But as we, I, we talked about yesterday, I am absolutely willing to come and, and talk to you about that language and we can review it together and, and move forward. Okay, thank you. As you and I both know, uh, being around teenagers, all you have to do is put a warning that this could be offensive and that makes them search it more, uh, as you also know. Uh, so that, that, that's another issue we need to evaluate and just evaluate what the effectiveness of this is, mm -hmm. to have a warning label on it if that's mm -hmm. really accomplishing anything on it uh, other than just being a distraction. Um, you and I also spoke about the raid that happened in Mar-a-Lago. Mm -hmm a former President Trump's private residence and going through those documents. Uh, in an unusual situation, it wasn't just the FBI carrying out the raid, but it was the request of the National Archives to be able to engage with these records and then trigger something with the FBI. Typically, this would be a voluntary conversation. It's my understanding that you've had dialogue with our staff to say all of your preferences, if any disagreements in this document, this should be a voluntary conversation rather than a legal conversation mm -hmm. or a raid. A raid of a former president's house is unprecedented mm -hmm. and it puts the entire process on full display to be able to say, how does this happen? Why does this happen? 
everyone gets questions on it. So my first of the question is, should this be a voluntary cooperation mm -hmm. rather than a legal raid with a search mm -hmm. warrant coming into a private residence? Well, thank you, Senator, for that question. I, I want to be clear that as the nominee for this position, I have not been briefed on any of the details of what has happened. So I have no information uh, about those decisions or the, or the sequence of events. But as I understand it, uh, when there is some uh, concern about uh, missing or, or damaged records in general at the National Archives, uh, at that point in time, the records, to re retrieve the records, there is a, a voluntary exchange of communication with those individuals. And as I understand it, once again, I don't have any past knowledge of this, uh, the vast majority of the time the records are, are recovered and retrieved. Right. This is unprecedented for a former president, obviously, to be able to go through this. The reason I ask you is because that has now set a new precedent that going forward, this is going to be the new standard for every president after this. And so th this starts a very different process that we're trying to be evaluate. The second part of my question on this is, mm -hmm. this is the National Archives, uh, the keeper of all records on this. Mm -hmm. Now the email chains, the conversations, any notes that were done for the National Archives in their communication with the FBI about this now become national historical records mm -hmm. and are not only important to be able to maintain and to be able to protect but also for the visibility of this committee as well. It's the reason that uh, Senator Scott and I have both mm -hmm. reached out to this committee to be able to say, we need to be able to talk about this mm -hmm. because there was something entirely new uh, that was just created by the National Archives mm -hmm. and the FBI in searching a former president's house. Will you agree to, in the future, making records available at the National Archives to be able to show what the process was and the decision-making was to be able to reach to this point so they'll have greater transparency for the American people? Yes. Thank you, Senator, for that question. Yes, I, I believe that transparency with this committee, I want to be responsive to requests if I am confirmed as archivist of the United States. Once again, I do want to state, I don't know right. where we are in this uh, Department of Justice law enforcement process. But as a general statement, Senator, you have my commitment that I will work with you and members of this committee to be as transparent as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Langford. Senator Hawley.